Hello to all of my peeps. It's so good to see you here today. From my chair, episode 136. Um, I typically don't start off these lessons with a, you know, this happened to me type of story. That's usually later on, but I've got to start with this one today. Uh, I really do need to. Um, uh, first of all, I've got to ask you a question. <laughs> i got to ask you a question. Do y'all have the, the no wash hair days? That, uh, you know, you have, these are wash hair days and these are no wash hair days. Okay, I don't know if you do. I know some of you go to the beauty parlor and you don't ever wash it and that's wonderful. But I do. I have what I call wash hair days and no wash hair days. Well, uh, the no wash hair days, uh, it, 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 the wash hair days, it takes me longer to get ready than the no wash hair days, like to the tune of 15 or 20 more minutes. Um, Monday for me is a no wash hair day, okay? Um, March for our church is Missions Emphasis Month. Uh, he's like, why are you telling us this? Hang on, it's all gonna come together in just a minute. Um, I was excited to leave early yesterday. Uh, I was gonna get more done. Uh, we're video. Uh, let me. Uh, we're videoing on Tuesday to air on Wednesday. So yesterday, Monday is a no wash hair day. But I so I, was, I woke up all excited, and uh, we my hunk a hunk of Vernon Love leaves has to leave by 4:30. Yes, 4:30. Uh, we start the wake up process at uh, 3:55. <laughs> I know. Don't have a heart attack. Yeah, I already did. It's okay. No worries. Um, uh, but I was really excited. I was going to get ready a little early and leave to work on my, my missions emphasis PowerPoints and things. And I was so excited about it because it's a no wash hair day. I was going to get this done, get out of there. I was excited. Okay, so I'm getting ready to hop in the shower. Uh, and I'm like, oh my goodness, I see a very nasty shower curtain. Okay. Again, you know, you got to think it's like 530 in the morning, Monday morning, about around 530 or so. And I'm looking, I'm like shaking my head. I'm like, no, no, we can't have this. Uh, okay, it's a no wash hair day. Uh, and uh, I've got a minute. I've got a minute to scrub it. I've got a minute to scrub it. So I go get my, my tub scrubber and some really strong cleaner. I go get strong cleaner. And uh, I'm the type, if you're going to clean the shower, just get in. Just get in. We have a big tub and just get in. So I did. I just got in and it'll be quicker. It'll be quicker. Clean the tub, then clean myself. All right. So I closed the curtain and I sprayed the cleaner and I started to scrub and I thought to myself, whoo, these fumes are going to make me sick. They're going to, because I was bent over and scrubbing and I'm like, whoo, these fumes are going to get to me. So when I started to turn the faucet, I started turning it on, I forgot that the shower lever was already up, and yes, you guessed it just like that. My no wash hair day instantaneously turned into a wash hair day, yes. Um, okay, so why are you telling the story message? All right, I'm going to tell you. It was in that frustrating moment. Oh my goodness, I tried. I tried to turn it off so fast and I'm, I, I feel, oh my goodness. I, I start tasting my hairspray as it's coming down my face. I start tasting my hairspray. I'm like, nope, there's no salvaging this hair. I'm gonna have to wash it. Which, yeah, that added a whole bunch of time on to my morning. Um, in that frustrating moment, the Holy Spirit told my heart something. Um, he's like, if. Again, it's 5.30 and you're cleaning a shower on Monday morning, okay? He told my heart, if you're going to do missions emphasis effectively and represent these missionaries effectively, which I don't know how you do it at your church, but uh, I do PowerPoints and represent our missionaries and tell our people about, um, about our missionaries and what they've been doing for the past year. If you're going to do that effectively and care for your duties at home and church, the Holy Spirit told my heart, you're gonna to have to let go of something. You're gonna to have to let go of something. You, you're not, you can't, you can't balance at all. Um, so all that to say this, the next three weeks are no YouTube lessons. Um, the, the 15th, March the 15th, March the 22nd, and March the 29th, I've got to concentrate on my missionaries, on our missionaries here at the Crestwood Baptist Church. 
I've got to concentrate on my shower, getting my shower curtain clean and not being so frustrated that uh, I can't get to the church a little bit earlier to, to start working and get getting these missions things cared for. I put a lot of time and effort into these YouTube lessons. You're worth it. And I love it. I love it. But the Holy Spirit told my heart, you're going to have to put that off. Uh, push pause on it until, Lord willing, April 5th, we'll be back and uh, with another episode. But I want to leave you with something. Something to chew on. Something really big to chew on, okay? Um, Solomon's Song. We're in uh, uh, Sol Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6. Uh, the Shunammite girl, she begins to tell us about herself. She says, I'm black because the sun hath looked upon me. Basically, she doesn't see herself like all the other fair-skinned women see her in town and see themselves in town. And she said, but mine own vineyard have I not kept. She hasn't had time to visit, had time to visit the beauty parlor to make herself beautiful to those around her and beautiful to herself. So we talk, we've been talking about God's beauty parlor. What is beautiful to God is very different than what is beautiful to man. So we've been answering the question, what is beautiful to God? Well, number one, your feet, according to Romans chapter 10, verse number 15, your feet are beautiful to God. Did you share the gospel this week? Did you hand out peace to people this week, God's love to people this week. Your feet are beautiful to God. Then we looked at Colossus, the word good in the New Testament. Many times, one of the words for, one of the uh, Greek words for good is Colossus. It means beautiful, it means handsome. Um, so from 1 uh, Timothy 2, 1 through 4, prayer is beautiful to God. Then last week we said, number three, a weird one that I told you to hang with me, fighting is beautiful to God. We looked at 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 18, and chapter 6, verse 12, and 2 Timothy 4, 6. So then I said, if you desire to live your life magnifying Christ and taking on his identity, then every single day you're going to fight. You're going to battle. You will most certainly battle your flesh. It's going to want to do all the wrong things. I told you last week, fight it. Uh, it, it, you will most certainly battle your mind. It's going to want to think all the wrong things. Fight it. Um, you, uh, you're most certainly going to battle this anxiety-filled, nasty world and all its influences. It's going to want to make you feel all, the, all kinds of ways about your faith. Fight it. Battle it. So in God's beauty parlor, it's beautiful. It's good to battle. Last week, I left you with an interesting thought to chew on. I said this, when we decide to fight the right entity, hang on to that. When we decide to fight the right entity, God looks at that and he sees beauty. It's good. Fight the good fight, the beautiful fight. The problem comes when our attention is drawn away from the real battle and the real fight. The fight then no longer is beautiful to God. Um, would you allow me to explain? The other day when I, as I was reading, fight the good fight, the beautiful fight. War a good warfare, war a beautiful warfare. I have fought a good fight, Paul said. I want to hope you say, I want to be able to say that also. Uh, fight the beautiful fight, watch. The beautiful fight is when we fight the ultimate enemy of God. That's Satan. Satan is the ultimate enemy of God. That's the beautiful fight. When you battle your flesh to glorify God in your body and in your spirit, you're battling the enemy of God. You're fighting Satan. When you battle your mind to think on Philippians 4, 8, remember we talked about true, honest, just, pure, lovely, of good report. When you battle your mind to think on those things, understand that you're fighting the prince of the power of the air, as Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 tells us. You're fighting him. You're fighting the prince of the power of the air when you battle your mind, when you battle your flesh. Take your Bible and go to Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Let's look at verse number 10. <laughs> this is so interesting. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Have you ever wondered what the word wiles meant? 
In the Greek, it means methodia. Methodia. Um, yeah, you guessed it. His methods. That you may, may be able to fight against the methods or the wiles of the devil. The beautiful fight then, you ready? Is found in chapter 12, the second part. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. That is the beautiful battle. That's what you're fighting. That's what you're fighting. Be strong in the Lord. The methods, uh, Satan's methods, we, we're, that's what we're fighting. We're fighting principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of the world, spiritual wickedness in high places. What I've been meditating on for the last several weeks is the first part of Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. I, did, I skipped it on purpose. Um, let's look at it. Ephesians chapter 6, the very first few words, the first phrase of chapter uh, 6, verse 12, uh, the very first part. For we wrestle not, underline that word not, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. For we wrestle not. Look, I need you to understand a very tricky methodia, a very tricky method of Satan. Last week's lesson, today's lesson, they've been about fighting the beautiful fight. The beautiful, uh, the beautiful fight can be boiled down to fighting and battling and clawing and warring against Satan and his nasty cronies. That's where the battle is. His nasty trick. Can I let you in on something? This is, again, I've been meditating on this. It has arrested my attention. That his nasty trick is to get your eyes off of him. Satan's nasty trick, his nasty methodia, his wiles, is to get your eyes off of him, the real enemy, and to place them on, watch, flesh and blood. Can I ask you a question? Um, who are you wrestling with? That Greek word wrestle, it means to strike, to throw down. Have you ever watched a wrestling match before? Uh, I don't like them. I, when I was younger, when I was little, I, I wrestled with one of my cousins, uh, and uh, I, we had a good time. We had a good time wrestling. And he won most of the time, but I, again, I was a tomboy, and I liked to go in the backyard and wrestle. Uh, we throw down. We, his mama had to come out and, and uh, stop, stop hurting her. <laughs> I'd be like, thank you. Uh, but I, so then uh, the, the wrestling for wrestle not, it means to strike. It means to throw down. Can I, let me ask you, who are you wrestling with? My teenage peep, listen to me, Sedge. Is it the authority in your life that you're wrestling with? Listen, listen. Are you wrestling with the authority, your parents, your teachers, the preacher, the pastor? Uh, anybody that's trying to rule your life and run your life, are you wrestling with them? Who are you wrestling with, my, little, my teenage peeps? How about my educator peeps? Yeah, who are you wrestling with? Um, is it a student who just refuses to get with the program? Uh, constantly brings a divisive spirit to your classroom? Are you, who are you wrestling? Who are you wrestling with, mama and daddy? Are you wrestling with that son or that daughter with a rebellious spirit? Or disobedient actions or disrespectful words? Who are you wrestling with, mama, daddy? Who are you wrestling with, pastor's wife? You wrestle too, don't you? Who you wrestle with, pastor's wife? A woman who has a contentious spirit? Maybe a gossip? Maybe a, a critical family in your church? Who you wrestling with, pastor's wife? Who you wrestling with, employee? An unappreciative boss? Or cursing co-workers? Who you wrestling with, dear wife? Wait, you know exactly who you're wrestling with. You're wrestling with him. You're, 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 you're verbally sparring with that hunk of hunk of burning love. Yeah, you can call him a hunk of hunk of burning love, but you're wrestling with him. Who are you wrestling with? A, a strong husband? Yep, it's her. It's her. That's who you're wrestling with. 
Watch. And that's exactly how Satan wants all of this to play out. He wants us to wrestle the wrong entity. He wants, to re he wants us to wrestle with the wrong person. He wants us to wrestle with flesh and blood. Look at it yourself. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But Satan wants us to wrestle against flesh and blood. He wants you to struggle with them to keep you distracted from putting on the whole armor of God and standing against him, the real enemy. Did you hear? Did you understand that? Satan wants you to struggle with them so that you get distracted from putting on the whole armor of God so that you can stand against him. And Satan is the real enemy here. And we're biting it. We're biting the bait and we're swallowing it. Hook, line, and sinker. Who are you wrestling with? Who are you wrestling with? Take your Bible and go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Look at verse number 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, <laughs> we do not war after the flesh. And then in parentheses, verse 4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Verse number 5, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity, we talked about this last week, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Watch, the beautiful battle is the one where you fight the ultimate enemy of your Abba Father, your Papa God, as, we, as they say it in Papua New Guinea, your Papa God. Watch, the beautiful battle to God, the beautiful fight is where you fight the ultimate enemy of God, your Abba Father. The ultimate enemy, listen, is not your husband. Your ultimate enemy is not your wife. It's not that son or that daughter. It's not the student with an attitude. It's not your boss. It's not that disgruntled church member. It's not your bestie. No, your ultimate enemy is Satan and his cronies. That's your ultimate enemy. Otherwise, you're fighting flesh and blood. I have an experiment for you. The next time you find yourself wrestling with flesh and blood, pay attention to how difficult it is to notice the blessings of God. I dare you. I dare you. I've tried it. I've tried it. Oh my goodness, it's next to impossible. I, when I wrestle with flesh and blood, when I wrestle with the wrong entity, I have a very difficult time noticing the blessings of God or the answers to prayer uh, or the sweetness of God's word. Um, it's all part of Satan's methods, his wiles, his methodia. Look, fight him, not them. Do you, do you hear me? This could change how you deal with people and how you deal with your family, how you deal with your students, how you deal with your parents. It could change how you deal with everybody. You're fighting him, not them. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers. Who is that? Ding, ding, ding. It's Satan and his cronies. That's who you're fighting. That's the ultimate enemy. But if you want to, and I cannot go into it today, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 11, it talks about we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. But look at those verses before it and see what it talks about. It talks about forgiving people. Yeah, it does. And how that you can forgive people in the person of Christ. Study it. I don't have time to do it today. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 4 through 11. That will help you tremendous, tremendously. Are you wrestling with the wrong entity? Who are you wrestling with? Who are you frustrated with today? 
You're not rest less wrestling with them. You're wrestling with Satan. There is something he does not want you to pay attention to. There is something he's trying to distract you from. Let us not be ignorant of his devices, his wiles, his methods. Watch. There's a reason why he wants you wants to distract you from fighting the beautiful fight. Okay, where is it? Ephesians chapter 6. Go back there. <laughs> this, is, this is amazing. Why in the world would say, why is he trying to distract us? Watch. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Okay. Then verse 13. Immediately. Wherefore. Take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand, stand therefore having your loins girt about with what? Truth. Satan despises truth. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, Satan cannot stand righteousness and your feet oh my goodness he woo, mercy sakes verse 15 and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace he does not want you sharing the gospel with anybody why because that gives more people to god and less people to him and who does satan hate and despise god verse 16 above all taking that shield of faith, wherewith ye may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Hmm. For which... I am an ambassador, verse 20, in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Hmm. I wonder why Satan wants us to fight flesh and blood. When we do that, we don't put on our armor. We fail to put on our armor. We're distracted uh, fighting him and her and them and them and her and him and that group and this group. Knock it off. Stop fighting the wrong person. Stop fighting the flesh and blood and fight, oh, smutty face. Put on your armor. He's trying to do everything he can do to distract you from that armor. Because you can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked when you've got that armor on. So, every single day, decide to put your armor on and fight the beautiful fight. Satan fighting him. That's the beautiful fight. Not your mama, not your daddy, not your husband, not your wife, not the children, not that teenager, not those kids in your class that are on your last nerve, they're rebellious, they're ugly. An ugly world. You're not battling them. You're battling Satan. Take the battle to him. Show him revelation. Show him his end. Remind him of his end. And fight him and not them. Don't forget, no lesson. Um, you're not going to forget because of my shower. <laughs> my shower story. No lesson, March the 15th, the 22nd, and the 29th, Lord willing. We'll be back on, the, on April 5th. Uh, with another challenge, something that's beautiful to God. I've, I've, I've got a, several things I want to hand you, uh, but uh, just be prepared. Lord willing, April 5th, we're going to push pause on this. Uh, hopefully, it'll give you a chance to get caught up on everything. And uh, don't forget Lydia at 11 in her journey to remain cancer-free. Now, go be amazing today.